Hi everyone, welcome to another video in the lockdown series. Today we're doing a technical session focusing on the basics of finger spin, but how we can practice it at home. So we're going to be concentrating on the grip and also wrist position so you can bowl balls like this. Yeah! Oh, I took a delivery. So grab yourself a ball with a seam on it, and if you don't have one, grab a tennis ball, draw a line on it to represent the seam, and when you're ready, let's go. So firstly we should figure out why should we bowl spin in the first place. The first main reason is we want a diverse bowling attack. If every bowl is the same then batters might find this a little bit easy. Remember we want to bowl the team out so we want to exploit batsmen's weaknesses but also we want to utilise the pitch conditions. So by having a variety of different bowlers we should be able to achieve the goal of bowling the team out. The next point is seamers can intimidate batters with their pace. Unfortunately, as spinners, we can't really do it with our pace, but we can embarrass them. So imagine someone runs down the wicket and they swing themselves off their feet, they miss the ball, and the keeper just takes it, takes the bells off, and he looks pretty silly. So we do have a chance to embarrass them. The last point is batters generally aren't very good at playing spin. They see that someone's slow coming on and they just think they can whack this bloke out of the park and they take a lot of risks, which means if you've got good control and you get your field right, you can take a lot of wickets. So just to cover off the basics, finger spin or off spin is when the ball spins into the batsman if you're a right-hander. So it goes from left to right, or if you're a left-hander like me, you go from leg to off, so away from the right-hander batsman. Remember, this is going to be opposite to uh, a left-handed batsman. If we look at this ball of Mitchell Santner bowling Hashim Amlar, it's the perfect left-arm spinner's delivery. You can see the ball spins from right to left, away from the right-handed batsman. So as a spinner, we can beat the batsman in the air as well as off the pitch. In order to achieve that, we want our seam position to be 45 degrees towards the batter. So as a left-arm spinner, I want my seam position to be like this, so as a, and as a right-arm spinner, I want my seam position to be like this. Now, if the ball rotates in this way, we have the perfect balance between top spin, which makes the ball drop, and side spin, which makes the ball spin. So if we get our seam position perfectly between the two, we're gonna get a lovely curve, drop, and then spin. If we hit the seam and the ball's rotating, that's when the seam digs into the ground and then spins. So if we're missing the seam, it it's very good variation because it might skid on, but if you keep scuffing the shiny side, don't think the seamers are going to be too happy. So we want to try and hit the seam as much as possible. If we look at Nathan Lyon's seam position, we can see the seam is pointing 45 degrees to the batter. Also, look how quickly the ball is rotating. The ball then hits the seam, spins and bounces, and as a result, it grabs the edge. I was extremely lucky I got to play with Matai and Rilithwin at Gloucestershire. And he said that dip and bounce are the most important things to get good batters out. So dip is when the ball drops in mid-air and it forces batsmen to play full shots because they think the ball's going to be full and they look to play an aggressive shot and then the ball drops onto a good length. And then you get the bounce, which means it hits high up on the bat. That's when you get your edges, you get your catches around the bat and then also it makes batsmen miss hit the ball when they're trying to attack. So if you look at this clip now of Nathan Lyon bowling to Quinton to cock. Look at the dip and spin he gets on the ball. It draws the cock into playing a full shot and he ends up losing his wicket. Oh no, 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 no. So how do we get the ball to drop, spin and then bounce? Well firstly it comes down to our grip. And our grip is very dependent on the size of our hands. If you've got quite big hands you can put two fingers on the ball. So remember our index finger is our main spinning finger and also middle finger can grip the ball like this. The wider you have your two fingers apart, the more spin you can actually put on the ball because your index finger is on the ball for longer. You can also put your thumb on the ball, but this is personal preference. Some people put their thumb on like this, they get it into their palm like this, or they just leave it so their fingers can then spin the ball. If your hands are a little bit smaller, 
you can place three fingers on the ball just to feel like you've got a little bit more control and you can still spin the ball. If we zoom in on Nathan Lyon's grip, you can see he uses two fingers as well as his thumb to hold the ball as he has quite big hands. So now we've got the grip sorted, the next bit is to understand how do we actually spin the ball. So spinning the ball is a combination of using your body, your wrist and your fingers. But today we're only going to concentrate on our wrist and our fingers. Even though it's called finger spin, we use our wrist a lot to spin the ball. So in order to use our wrist, we've got to cock it back, ready to release. But the direction we cock it back in is very important. So the best way to remember is to do a thumbs up and then bring your thumb back to your opposite shoulder. So if you're right-handed, thumbs up and bring it back to your opposite shoulder. The reason we don't want to bring it back to the same shoulder is that means we're in a top spin position, so we're not going to get any side spin. And if we're 90 degrees to the batter, we only put side spin on, we're not going to get that drop that we talked about earlier. So make sure we get that thumb coming back to the opposite shoulder, and then we can get that 45 degree seam position. If you hold it like a seamer, so seamers cock their wrist back like they're revving the motorbike. If we do that as a spinner, we're actually going to undercut the ball. So the ball comes out like this, and we hit this side, and we're not actually going to hit the seam. So it's a good variation, and we'll cover that in a future video. But for your stock delivery, the delivery that you bowl most often, we want to try and get over the top of the ball. So we get that thumb right, we release the wrist, and the next bit is you flick your fingers. So this index finger has got to go over the top of the ball like a rainbow. And the quicker you can flick these fingers while you're releasing your wrist, that's how you're going to put the maximum amount of spin on the ball. So the more the ball rotates and spins, the more chance we have of bowling balls like this. So now we understand how to actually spin the ball, it's really good to get the feeling of how the ball actually comes out of the fingers. So if you grab the ball and get into your grip, and then just flick the ball up to yourself, making sure that your index finger hooks over the top, and you release your wrist and flick your fingers like we talked about earlier, and you're just trying to put the maximum amount of rotation and revolution on the ball, because then that's going to mean that we're putting a lot of spin on the ball. So you can do it from high like this, or you can do it from low where your index finger goes underneath the ball and you just pop the ball up to you like this. But remember, we can spin the ball hard, but we want to get our wrist position right when we release the ball so we can bowl balls like this. Bowl him! So in order to practice that, you can throw the ball against the wall, you can get in your grip, remember 90 degrees, facing away so we want to be in between, and then just throw the ball back against the wall. And if you've got a ball that is half and half, then we can practice making sure our seam position is really good. So the more we can do that, the more we can get this finger over the top of the ball, getting that 45 degree seam position, the more chance we have of bowling balls like this. So now you can go away and practice these fundamentals as much as possible. Always remember to spin the ball hard. We are spin bowlers, we are not slow bowlers. So never just put the ball there. Make sure we are trying to put revolutions and spin on the ball as much as possible. So remember your wrist position. Get that thumb right, cocking the wrist back towards 45 degrees, releasing the wrist, flicking your fingers, getting your index finger over the top of the ball, drawing a rainbow over the top of the ball to make sure that we're getting that 45 degree seam position. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below. Follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to stay informed on future posts. Until next time.